Done. Very nice meeting you. Um, Good to meet you. From what I understand, you took over at the helm about March last year, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. No, um, I, I joined the business in November as Chief Commercial Officer and then became CEO so in November March. So November 2022? 22, 22 and became CEO in March 23. Uh, I don't know how it works with companies and takeovers, but from what you know, what is publicly av available, just give us a little summary of how um, the, the, the new group you know, sure. uh, came uh, to the, the decision to uh, purchase... Southgate. Uh, Southgate, as you know, uh, have been around for over 50 years, um, formed by the Turner family, very successful. They grew the business from 30 million up to about 72 million, especially through the COVID years where we saw that huge growth yep. and took it internationally as well. Um, and then August 2021, they realised that for any further growth, they probably had to bring in outside investors. Mm. Uh, and they selected Rutland Partners, who are a private equity firm. Uh, and Rutland became majority shareholders in August 21, around about August 21. A new management team, uh, new experienced people who have dealt with you know, scaling a business even further. Mm. And it really was the turners, I think, thought that it was an excellent opportunity to get people in. They're still minority mm. uh, shareholders within the business and right. still involved around uh, the board. But uh, yeah, it's now a new, new management team looking to for the next stage of growth for Southgate. Okay. Give me just a minute on uh, your background, what, what you were doing pr pr prior to Southgate, but also just uh, uh, historically. Your, historically, your my, my background, um, well, for 17 years, it was always FMCG. So uh, quite a nice roll call of Nestle, Unilever, Coca-Cola, Diageo, was at Diageo for nine years, all in, in sales roles and mm -hmm. then into general management. Generally looking at business transformation, commercial transformation, how do you really scale a business, double, triple the size of it? Mm. How was 2023 for you at the helm? And you know, your relationship and your backing uh, from uh, Rutland? So uh, 23, and I think it was, it's been for most businesses, has been a tough year. The yep. market has been very tough. Yep. You know, with the situation, with uh, inflation, with consumer spending, with freight costs, but it's been tough for a lot of our customers mm. as well. And they've been looking at their capex and how much they're spending. Rutland are very supportive. Uh, we've got the financial backing in place and the real support. We've invested very strongly in 23. 23 was in some ways a rebasing year, really looking at what is our short-term and long-term strategy? Mm. What is our value proposition? About readdressing that value proposition that the Turners have done a fantastic business, but our customers not truly understanding everything that we do. Mm. They only saw one certain elements of it. Uh, going after and going after new customers because there's a big story to tell there with new customers out in the marketplace, uh, and bringing in the right team mm. to actually go after and deliver that. The predictions are that things will improve just market conditions-wise towards the back end of 24, and then fairly good CAGA growth through. 25, 26, all the way up to 28. But I guess it's a challenge as well to, uh, to increase, to grow the business and to increase that market share because they've done so well. What the Turner family had started to do was then also do a lot more around fulfillment equipment. So right. carts, trolleys, things that um, you know, help people move goods around their network all the way from the fulfillment centre or the uh, factory or the manufacturing site all the way through to the end consumer mm. and where Rutland saw the opportunity is then to be able to lift and shift some of those ideas to a much wider uh, customer base mm. and then something that's really been huge growth for us in 23 and will be considerably more in 24 is then the servicing offering mm. whereas we always did service some of our consumer equipment we're now doing a lot of servicing around carts and the trolleys and that fulfillment equipment to make sure there is higher uptime, lower capex, much higher productivity. So do you literally mean um, you're, you're selling equipment that uh, your clients would be using in their warehouse? Yes. Trucks and all the rest of it? Yeah. And carts? Yes. And the, the, the service element of it? So you've got technicians that are we, making we, sure that they're maintained? We, we now have service technicians in seven countries across Europe. Right. Um, uh, and they do a mixture of uh, on-site, 
fixing, but mm -hmm. we also have mobile clinics where um, if you need to do, for example, uh, hot works, which you can't do on the customer site, mm -hmm. the carts come to those and the, and the things do when we fix them on site. So really mobile, all app generated, but then a huge amount of then the interest of, of how do they keep their equipment? How do you make that equipment last longer? Right. How do you then, you know, how do you then change design uh, of that equipment? Because you can see the things that break, but, you know, lowering capex, increasing lifetime, mm. you know, much more sustainability. And avoiding, of doing it. I, I guess, avoiding uh, downtime. V avoiding downtime, yeah. huge in capex yeah. spend. So I'll yeah. give, give you an example on that. I mean, to, for one particular, we, we fixed over 175,000 carts for them last year. And, and, and if they were to buy those carts, it would have been about 40 million. Right. Uh, so it's huge mm. opportunity, almost like a three prong approach now, whereas previously, I think most of our customers just saw us as a packaging. Yep. But now it's even through some of those traditional trade customers we're doing. No, no, it's it's the full end to end solutions for them. Uh, you've described the services yes. and the products that you're offering. But um, give me a summary of what you're aiming to, where, where you're aiming to um, expand, and which uh, your, your footprint, shall we say, um, and how those markets are doing that you have actually um, expanded in or, sure. or began to expand. Yeah, in. yeah. No, I mean, so really, when you look at our industry focus, um, there's really six that we 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 we've really called out. Uh, one is um, e-commerce, yep. clearly, yep. because that's a huge a huge element for us. There's three PLs, mm. uh, there's post and parcel. Um, then there is retail, and we're starting to do some very interesting things with some retailers around um, how you improve their productivity when it comes to in-store picking and then online, and then how they dispatch that right the way through. Um, uh, general manufacturing, as we class it, but then that's going into subdivisions of you know food and drink and mm. uh, agriculture and um, petrochemical and all of those other elements from that. And then there is our distributor partners who we work very strongly with, but then they also then feed into some of those other end segments. Probably not all of them are as booming as much as some are. So no. where, where, I mean, where, where are you experiencing really good business and where is there the potential that you need to grow? Well, we're seeing, the interesting thing is we're, we're seeing good potential in all segments because we're trying to increase some of our customer base mm -hmm. from in that area. There has certainly been an element where if you look at some of the e-commerce elements, you know, that has last year reduced. There seems to be yep. changing dynamics, especially on the packaging element. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing is an improvement on things like the servicing and the fulfillment equipment. Yep. Um, but the same for then the, and then the natural effect. If e-commerce is not the, is, is doing as well as buoyant, then 3PLs, there's a knock-on effect and mm -hmm. post and parcel. There's a knock-on effect because those, it depends on how those three, those 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 e-commerce are all linked, aren't they? Well, they're all linked. Yeah. Yeah. They're all linked. What we're seeing probably more growth in is is the opportunity where people have got equipment and they're wanting the that equipment to either last longer, and therefore there's the opportunity on servicing, or there there's an opportunity for new design of equipment that in helps improve the productivity and the efficiency within their picking, mm. packing dispatching Pack stations operate, and operation packaging yeah. lines and because how can you do things quicker yep. how can you do things that are more sustainable how can you do things that reduce less energy mm. how can you do things that are more um, accurate for example you know one of our things here is is our mobile power workstation mm -hmm. so this is something in any picking or packing operation that you use a mobile desk has a power system which is our mobile power uh, system on the bottom mm -hmm. you know that now with that new battery system on there will last 16 hours. So it's two shifts before you have to recharge. Mm -hmm. You can have your laptop in here, you can have a printer on here. You know, people use it in, in different ways, but they, and then that reviews the old walk time where people used to walk around to stations and been writing stuff mm, down yes. and back to station to fill it's things the in. New age pack station. But it's the mm -hmm. new age that you're walking around mm -hmm. doing that whole dispatch operation. And you know, one of these, um, you know, from the research we've done, we'll save, you know, each employee basically about £5,000 right. per year. We're seeing a lot more small vans turning up to places where they have the loading base. For well, trucks. How, for trucks. Well, mm -hmm. how, how do you, you know, the, the disruption in the, in the operation when you're trying to fill a, a 
small van. So what we've done is we've, we've through a customer and that customer insights, we've developed a, um, a low rise ramp that will have a seven and a half ton truck you can drive up to the back. Right. And therefore you can load that truck from the loading base. The expertise we have around the design element. So if we don't have something that is already a fit place solution, we can help design mm. it for you. Full end to end with designers, with you know, real industrial engineers that go and look at the problem with that customer and find out what is the right solution for them. And that's where now Southgate is ideally positioned mm. to go after those solutions. Southgate as a whole was centering around this gr huge growth of e-commerce, which again, like you said, it's not necessarily going to uh, change, it's, but it might be, it, the timeline might be slightly it, different. Timeline might be different. Yeah. I think what the other thing is that you have to look in, in any times when the market is tough as a business, is you have to look at your customer base mm. and you have to look at the industries that you're in and which industries are, uh, are, are say, more resilient in mm. that time frame. Mm. Uh, and so there is certainly, for Southgate, is that we are repositioning ourselves that where we see a lot of this growth is, yes, growing with the customers we've already worked with by providing a wider range of solutions and them understanding those solutions, but also then going after a much wider customer base mm. uh, into industries and channels that maybe are slightly more resilient in this time. Uh, we're quite interested to know, A, the topic of sustainability, whether that's in-house, what you have done over the last year or what you're planning to do, and you know, how, how, what, what kind of forecasts you're giving yourselves for 2024. Sure. And then the, 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 your plans generally, uh, your own investment capacity, mm -hmm. your recruitment drive. So uh, sustainability is interesting. You know, it, it's, I, and I think you, you have to take it from lots of different lenses. One, there is a demand for, there is a demand for sustainable products. So mm -hmm. there's an element around there and always looking at your sustainable range and having that for a customer. I think the other element from it is, as a business, ha are, there is definitely an ESG agenda that you have to meet your customers' needs. Mm -hmm. So in other words, what I mean by that is not that you, are, you have to be making sure about you know, understanding you know, where some of your products are being made and is it ethical and is it you know, compliant to the standards of, live, of ways of people's workings that they actually want to do. And your CapEx, your inv investment plans our, our and your recruitment plans? Yeah, our recruitment plans is, is even in, in a tough year last year, we, you know, we are recruiting, you know, we've, we've recruited, we've got a few vacancies at the moment, but we're a bigger team, mm -hmm. um, more experienced team um, of doing it. So much more expertise around uh, that we can be out with our customers uh, and giving them the expertise they need on the ground. We sell a large range of products and solutions and our salespeople you, therefore should be aligned so that they are industry experts. Mm. So therefore they really understand that industry and the solutions and therefore can help lift and slift, shift ideas. Mm. Um, but then you, they are relationship people and therefore what you then need is product design solution experts that can come in and support that person with the customer. So we've very much upweighted our, our, what we call our new product and our innovation team, who are our design team that then can come into the field where previously they were probably more back office. They are now much more front, front and center working with the customer on what's their solution, how do they pick and pack, where can we see improvements, and then what is the design of the solution that needs to be in their place. Mm -hmm. So a lot more field based that way. Uh, and then having the right uh, salespeople with the right industry knowledge that then we can then get to all these new customers. How was 2023 and what are you forecasting for 2024? 2023 was a decline, as you would expect in most yeah. markets. Yeah. Um, 24, we're expecting to go move back into growth again. Right. So 24, I think that where we're aiming to be more than anything else is probably somewhere or at least a 20% growth okay. in 24. So, so that's pretty enough. optimistic. Pretty optimistic, but we've got the pipeline of opportunities to allow us to deliver that. We've got some very interesting things going on. Mm. Uh, and that's even before existing customers, before going after some new customers. Mm. Uh, and it's really a, a pronged approach. We see growth within both consumables, packaging equipment, fulfillment equipment, and then our servicing offer as well. Mm. I think the difference with Southgate previously and what our customers and potentially prospects didn't know 
is that we're not just a packaging business. Mm. You know, we are, uh, as we say, we're an operational logistics and fulfillment business. So there are, what we really are now is end-to-end -end solutions mm. that allow you to pick, pack, and dispatch. But at the same time, then, it's the solutions that you can have for those customers on the whole productivity, efficiency, sustainability, health and safety, where there are still huge opportunities because people are wanting their money to go further and mm. to work faster and better. And that's where now Southgate is ideally positioned mm. to go after those solutions.